Hey folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have an unboxing video to show you of the, uh, the final production version of the brand new FMS 1700 millimeter F7F Tiger Cat, guys. Um, this is one of the first ones off the assembly line. They're going to be showing up at Horizon Hobby here pretty soon and probably other places as well. And uh, I'm really excited to get in there and see some of the, the, the changes and upgrades and improvements they've made to this. Uh, the picture on the box and all over this airplane are a lot of the photos of the actual test plane that I was flying and making improvements and me and Brandon Moon were working on making changes. You can see the engines are, engine detail is, is improved. But uh, if you watch some of the videos I've made in the past, guys, um, this is one hot performing airplane. Uh, it is the new flagship from FMS models and it's also probably uh, the king of warbirds uh, in the entire industry now. Probably the nicest multi-engine, really nice retractable landing gear, probably the nicest foam warbird on the market, period. And I'm going to try and keep this video short, but I don't think I'm going to be successful because there's a lot of information, a lot of detail I'm going to show you on this airplane. It's going to be coming again to Horizon Hobby very soon, guys. They're actually running a raffle on it now for a free one at Horizon Hobby. So if I get this video out in time, go to Horizon Hobby and see if they're still running the raffle and you might be able to win a free one. So uh, it also has four decal sets available for this thing or uh, that come in the airplane. And I'm going to show you all that in uh, great detail. Here's just a quick look, guys, at the back of the box. We, Steve and I were pretty excited about this because this is a photo that we actually took of my early test plane. And we had a several pictures they often put on boxes, but this picture is simply huge. This box is gigantic, guys. I can't even fit it inside the frame, uh, but I'm doing my best to get in here and show you all that. But anyway, stellar photo that we took here, and they give you a little overview here on, on the airplane. Now let's take a look at some of the features that the uh, airplane has. On one side of the box, you can see all of the, uh, the paint options for the uh, blue airplane are uh, just included and displayed right here. There is going to be a silver plane coming out shortly after this, uh, which is going to be the La Patrona Racing uh, version, which I'll show you. Uh, on the other side of the box. But right here you got all the, the four uh, included color schemes with this airplane. Now it comes painted blue again in the box, just blue with no stickers on it. But they give you the decals and the sticker packages for the Big Boss Man, the King of the Cats, here Kitty Kitty, and Bad Kitty. And as we uh, take a look at these things uh, up closer, Big Boss Man's pretty sweet because it's got some red detail in it and uh, some really nice uh, graphics there on the nose. Uh, my favorite guys is the King of the Cats and that's the uh, test plane that I had them set up as King of the Cats to demo. The big number, red number seven on the side of the engines, the tail and the wing really stand out. Uh, also uh, here, Kitty Kitty, guys, uh, has some red detailing in it as well. Also another Marine Corps paint job, and it has a girl on the front of it uh, holding the Marine Corps logo, which is kind of sweet. And uh, Bad Kitty as well, guys. This one I really like. This is probably the one I'm gonna set up on this airplane. Um, I really like, my, my daughter loves cats and I really like that uh, Bad Kitty logo on the front. So again guys, the model comes in blue, uh, but you get the four sticker packages and options that are in, included uh, with the airplane. So these are the specs guys. Wingspan is about 67 inches or 1700 millimeter, uh, 58 inches long, uh, two uh, 450 kV, or sorry, 4250, 440 kV motors. As you guys have seen in the video, plenty of power and performance. Two 60 amp speed controllers with a separate 10 amp uh, UBEC on board, and I'll show you that when we take a look at it closer. You've seen that, I actually showed that in some of the other videos as well. Uh, 12 uh, servos total, 713 gram brand new medical, medical uh, analog servos, and uh, five 17 gram uh, digital metal servos. Um, the CG here of 70 to 80, I have found mine to be a little bit more like, um, I think it was 57 to 63. Uh, and I'll talk to you more about that, but I think this is a little bit too far aft. The plane will fly that way, but I think it's better a little bit farther forward. And then the three blade propellers, 14, eight by three bladed props. And uh, runs on a 5,000 up to a seven or 8,000, whatever you can put in there. Six cell battery, guys, and that's a single battery that this thing takes, which is uh, really nice. It's way better than putting a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of uh, different, uh, Two batteries in the airplane I really can't stand, but uh, I have some that fly like that. And then you can see the two color options here, guys. Uh, the blue, which I'm going to be showing you, and the silver, which Brandon Moon actually has already, and you can check out his channel. He's got some, uh, some pictures of that already, and I'll probably be getting that one going here eventually as they get into production. And, and then, again, guys, a couple of photos here on the side of just some of the detail of the King of the Cats and the Bag Kitty and the uh, La Patrona uh, decal that's on there. And uh, you can see here on the side, guys, um, 
the silver version of the airplane. Again, the La Patrona Air Racer there as well. Uh, more detail here, guys, to show you. Uh, talks about the motors. Very accurate landing gear, which I'll show you. It's got LEDs on the wings uh, as well. Uh, and uh, again, the detail, I don't want to go too much into this stuff, but very large wheels, guys. I'm going to show you that up close so you can kind of see what those are like. Uh, great for paved and grass surfaces. I mostly fly this thing on uh, grass. Uh, button type canopy latch. Very large battery compartment, as you'll see in here. And you guys have probably seen in my, uh, my last videos. And also, four sets of decals, guys. So anyway, really sweet airplane, guys. Now, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what this thing looks like coming out of the box. As we look inside of the box, guys, you can see uh, that uh, uh, everything is packaged really nicely. And uh, one of the ways that FMS is leading the way in the industry right now is the, their airplanes are the fastest out of the box and out to the flying field. Little to no gluing on this thing. There's only a couple cosmetic details, the guns, the antenna, and a pitot tube that you use some, some contact cement or CA to glue in place. Other than that, guys, this is a screw together airplane. So although it's a big 1700 millimeter twin engine airplane, it bolts together and you're out to the field flying pretty quick. One of the biggest things to notice here, guys, that's really impressive uh, with all the FMS airplanes, guys, is that the rods, horns, linkages, as you can see right here, ball links, all installed already. And uh, no more of this uh, gluing in servos into the wing panels anymore. They are put in their separate, their own separate uh, hatch with screw holes. And you can pop these little uh, latches off on the side, those little cl uh, clips, and you can unscrew, and you can unscrew the servos and remove them if you need to, instead of just having to yank them out of the foam. Hopefully you don't need to remove them at all, but if you do have to remove them, servicing them is easier. You don't have to yank the glue out of the foam. The other thing to notice, too, is the detail on this airplane, guys. Look at the rivet detailing that FMS has put in, and look at that finish. Uh, Brandon Moon and I, as we were uh, you know, working on the two uh, sort of prototype samples, um, we were complaining about the finish, but it was the first one out of the mold, and they have cleaned it up. Not only does it have the nice rivet detail, but it has a very smooth, more or less more like a fiberglass or wood finished uh, model. Uh, as you can see here, guys, all the connections here are ready to go. You can see those uh, engine connections, the engine nacelles, those are just ready to be plugged in along with the ESC and the gear and door connectors, and uh, it's all ready to go. Decal packages are right there, guys. Um, and the nose cone is up front, fuselage is down under there, and uh, as you can see, it's a very complete and really just, like I said, ready to, ready to bolt together package. And with that, guys, let's get all the parts out, and uh, we'll take, lay out everything, and we'll take a look at everything up close. Here's the layout of all the parts that came out of the box, guys, and man, this thing is huge. I had to work really hard to fit everything in the frame. It's all here, minus the instruction manual and the decal sheet, which I'll show you here shortly. But you can see this thing barely fits in my frame. I tried to squeeze it all in there. I'm trying to show you a top side of the wing right here, guys, and a bottom side of the wing, and also a top side of the uh, elevator uh, and the bottom side of the elevator, so you can kind of get a little, little detail of the whole thing. First thing I want to show you, though, before we get into too much into the, the specs or details of the airplane, are the decal packages are really nice. Uh, initially, guys, we had stickers for everything, but after Brandon and my, me, especially Brandon, uh, was uh, kind of complaining about the stickers uh, not conforming to the rivets very well, um, they went ahead and decided to make all the nose art, guys, as you can see here, in a water transfer decal. So they will now adhere much nicer. So King of the Cats, guys, as you can see right here, is uh, just a really nice water transfer decal. Also the Here, here, here Kitty Kitty, uh, the Bad Kitty, which is probably the one I'm going to be putting on mine, and the Big Boss Man. So guys, really nice water transfer decal for the nose art, and all four guys are included with this thing. Also, let's take a look at the, uh, the decals here as well. You can see here mostly the uh, stars and bars, guys. This is for all the airplanes. The stars and bars go on every, all four of the different decals with your safety propeller, fuselage markings, and danger warnings, and all that kind of stuff. Now, these are stickers, guys. These are pretty thick uh, stickers. And um, we found that they don't, they don't really conform to the rivets all that well, but they look great on the airplane. The colors are the same and everything. So I'm going to put these on my stock airplane just like I did with the... Uh, with the uh, the uh, King of the Cats uh, airplane. But if y'all want, uh, Cali Graphics, guys, if you guys want to go over to Cali Graphics, they've got all these uh, all these decals there in decal form, or uh, actually they're a sticker type thing, but they're actually thinner and they'll conform to all the rivets if you want to go that way. So they have all those that you can buy optionally. But as you can see, all the stickers are included here, guys. You got Bad Kitty right here, which is what I'm going to be using on mine probably uh, on this one. And then uh, here Kitty Kitty as well here, guys. 
and the king of the cats which are all red decals which again I think really stand out well in the airplane and then of course right here guys the big boss man decals again guys all these stickers and the nose art decals are all included with the airplane and with that guys here's a look at all the parts guys I tried to give you a top side of the wing and a bottom side of the wing and a, a top side of the elevator and a bottom side of the elevator so you can kind of look at it everything is ready to go guys the quality of this is far superior the finish and the moldings are far superior than that first test sample that I got um, and starting here at the bottom guys is the main fuselage with all your electronic speed controllers installed really nice nose retract installed you got to put your uh, nose cone on there you just kind of glue that with some contact cement all the electronics are in here uh, ready to go uh, actually the speed controllers I say take that back are in the wings but all the wiring harnesses and everything are ready to be plugged in your main spar hole there canopy comes off with a latch which is really nice pilots already in there rudder servos already installed here's your main nacelles all assembled guys ready to be bolted onto those wings with four bolts wires retractable landing gear it's all installed there and ready to go motors are in there and everything elevators really nice quality rods hordes and linkages installed drop tank right here ready to slide on that's a nice thing no screws are needed for that drop tank you can slide it on slide it off and you're good to go the wings guys probably better to look at the uh the the, the underside of the wing here rods hordes linkages as i talked about all those things are pre-installed ready to go no gluing of those no screwing linkages none of that you don't have to do any of it you really just need to kind of check them for trimming and tuning when you get it all set up wires are ready to accept uh, the nacelle uh, and right here guys is your speed controller that's that new ventilated panel that's uh air actually enters through that scoop and cools it down up at the top main wing spar two tail spars a y harness right there gun detail which they did some improvements to uh, your prop hub and spinner detail and your propeller blades which all this stuff again screws in place it's pretty fantastic guys so with that let's go ahead and take a look at each of the individual parts guys in much greater detail the first part I have to show you guys is the uh, main fuselage man this thing is big and it's in really nice shape guys they did a much better job on the finish on this uh, final production version than uh, than the, uh, the the early sample I got I think they just didn't get the pressure up on the molding initially but it's very very nice guys as we go down this thing uh, you can see all that uh, rivet detail in there very very nice all the way around now starting at the front I'm going to show you this up here nose cone literally just glues into position my first one needed a bunch of nose weight but I don't think you're going to need it on this one because they move the battery a little farther forward you can see that cooling hole that goes up right to the battery compartment cools everything down and goes out that back those back holes in the back there so a lot of cooling was well thought out there are holes ventilated uh, louvers in the nose here there's a, a, a little slot there so you can tell which is uh, right and which is left but there's a little contact cement will glue that on I actually ended up screwing mine in place so I could remove it if I needed to but anyway guys gun detail is right there you can see your uh, nose gear retract which I showed you guys in prior videos and I'll show you how nicely detailed that is all the doors are closed up everything's installed ready to go I had actually redesigned these nose gear with a spring-loaded mechanism you can see they they actually got it all set up there so it is spring-loaded you can actually open it a little bit now and then they'll nicely just kind of slam shut which is really really nice they open and close ball bearing supported wheels guys not sure if you can see that I'll try and get in there ball bearings on all of the center wheels guys so really really nice hole there that gets all the wiring back there retract mechanism is in there and I'll probably show you that later guys I'm probably gonna do a build guide on this plane and I'll show you all that stuff uh, later now I'm gonna show you up front here first guys uh, you can see the uh, cockpit detail and the pilot in there they painted zinc chromate in there I went ahead and unlatched this earlier because I was having a hard time doing this on the camera single-handed but you can see how the, the canopy latch everything comes off really nice and it latches into place with this really nice plastic fitting and when I latch that shut you'll see what it's like uh, really nice as I talked about before uh, they've got a spar running through here and it runs from like front to back to keep this thing nice and stable cooling holes ventilation holes inside the canopy to keep it cool in there and help prevent it from bubbling up a little bit and then the pilot screwed in place guys so he won't uh, he won't come out of there now as we look inside here what they did from my early t uh, test plane which I had complained about what they changed was is they went ahead and put, moved the, the main battery the 6,000 million packing or, or I'm sorry 5,000 million six cell packing I'll go all the way up front so it uh, adjusts it or, or it addresses the uh, CG issue I had in the beginning now it balances just fine you can see you got a nice balance strap light right here and tons of battery compartment space 
right along here, your main wiring harness, guys. Uh, there's your BEC right there, which you do want to secure to the side of the airplane somewhere so the wires uh, don't fray. Um, one of the uh, kind of issues that we had uh, in the very beginning with the plane, uh, that I had with it anyway, is without securing this thing, these wires down here could fray off the board. So you do want to secure this so you're not constantly pulling on that BEC. Even though it's floating in here, you want to have it secured. I'll probably talk about that a little later on. And then as you get in here, you can see everything's all wired up. Um, receiver can actually go nicely right in here now if you want to just mount it in here. I had mine in the back before on my test plane. And uh, there's plenty of room back there for it. Um, you can see here where your single wing spar goes right in there. 17 and a half millimeter all carbon spar, 17 and a half millimeter all carbon spar slides right through here, guys, and all your wiring goes through here. And uh, nice uh, wing pads to mount everything to. And you can see all your wiring for your wings mostly goes through here, okay? But you do have a power wire, and I believe it's the ESC wire have to go through there, so you kind of have no choice. Um, really nice latch here, guys, to get this, this thing on with. And I'm gonna show you how well that thing latches into place, but really nice floorboard for your battery. Very nice compartment area for all of your electronics, battery, and uh, so forth. Now, let's take a look at how nicely this canopy goes on. Now, as we put it on there, again, the tip of this thing, they rounded off the plastic, which was a very good idea. So as you put this on, you can just push this down and it has a real positive lock. So no magnets on there to keep it, uh, keep it on there. It just latches on pretty securely. And then guys, you have right here, as you can see, uh, metal threads here. There's only two screws that mount this wing. So you put your spar in, slide your wing. Most of your connections are made through here. Power and ESC is made through here. When your wing slides on, it connects very positively on here and you have metal threads, machine screws, machine screws. Only four of them are needed to mount uh, uh, the, both, both wings on, two per wing, so it's really, really nice. You can see your single point wing connector that makes pretty much all your electrical connections for your uh, ailerons, flaps, landing light, um, uh, ailerons, flaps, landing gear, and uh, let's see, I think your doors or something. But anyway, all your connections are made right there. As we roll along here, you can see the detail. You can see your cooling exhaust holes right there. As we go to the back, very nice plastic fittings, guys, for your elevator to slide in. Two spars go right through here. As I pull this off, this is the tape they used for overspray uh, as they were painting this airplane to keep the, uh, also to keep the connectors in there from getting around there. Actually, I'll probably just uh, you know, pull those off of there. Uh, and that was just to keep these uh, connectors from popping out and tearing up the, air, the paint and stuff. So anyway, those come off, but you can see they're all really nicely labeled elevator. So there's dual elevator channels on this, but spectacular plastic fitting, guys that holds everything, that elevator slot fits in there perfectly. Um, really nice servo, ball linkage, everything down here, rudder is very nice. One of the nice things about the control surfaces on this plane, what FMS is doing to all their airplanes, guys, it's a submerged style hinge. You can see how it's a traditional center mounted uh, hinge in there, and it all rotates there uh, really nicely, guys, right around a center point, just like full scale airplane does. So very, very sweet how they did that. Trim tab detail. I'll see if I can uh, flip this around and uh, show you guys the other side. Uh, really looks the same as the first side, um, but uh, really, really nice all the way around, guys. Nice detail everywhere. Uh, one more item to show you on the bottom, guys. That's the, uh, the latch that latches the, uh, the drop tank on. So uh, as you can see, that drop tank literally just slides on, slides off, so you can take it on and off with ease. But anyway, guys, really sweet fuselage panel coming on the, uh, the new Tiger Cat from FMS. Here's a look at one of the uh, engine nacelles, guys. This is really sweet. Look at that engine detail. It should probably say right here on the sign, Brandon Moon was here with an arrow pointing there because Brandon took a one look at the uh, sample model and saw that this was made out of a Lexan and it wasn't very detailed. And uh, he said, hey, we got to change that. FMS listened and uh, I agree with him. They went with a really nice, they remolded one of these. Uh, I think it's out of plastic, so very nice. Uh, engine detail, you can see all the cooling louvers and everything all the way around there, nuts and bolts, so very, very detailed uh, dummy engine uh, uh, detail in there, very, very nice. Uh, as we look around here, just on the underside here, guys, this is what uh, connects to the uh, underside of the wing there. You can see your wires, everything's all ready to go. Um, you got connectors, you've got your two uh, or your three uh, motor wires, and they're all labeled. They actually, I think, put an A, B, and a C on here, so they labeled them for, for polarity. I'm guessing you got to use uh, uh, connect the numbers together, maybe not so much the colors, but you can see in here, guys, machine screws here, machine screws here, here, and here. So four machine screws with countersunk bolts 
go through the top of the wing and into this. Your engine cell is on, guys, and it'll come off really easy. So really nice exhaust stack detail. You can see all that right there. Uh, nice riveting detail all the way around. And uh, just really, really, really stellar all the way around. A couple blemishes I noticed. This is probably, they do this to me sometimes. Again, I get the earlier ones that they, uh, looks like that maybe got stuck to a cloth or something during the, uh, the painting of this plane. So I'm not real excited with that, but I'll probably touch that up myself. Um, usually these come a little bit cleaner than that. But again, mine's sort of an early model, a little bit too. One of the first ones that they actually do send to me, so they tend to be a little, again, a little rougher. But this is a production plane, so I'll uh, send that off to FMS for them to look at. Uh, you can see right down there, they uh, changed this a little bit. I added the servo into the construction of this plane where they had a trapeze mechanism back here to pull the doors open. But I added a servo, and they pretty much mimicked it. It works really nice and functions really well. But uh, springs back there to assist the doors, just like I did on my uh, test plane. And the system works really well. But my lord, guys, look at that aluminum landing gear. Isn't that a thing of beauty? This is the production version of it. It's all down in there. You can see the mechanism in there that drives it. You guys have seen this in my prior video, so really sweet, really nice big wheel in there, guys. I can't remember whether this is three, three and a half, three and three quarters inch, but really sweet wheel. Ball bearing supported, and it's got suspension on it, which I can't relate. It's kind of hard to show you in there, but you guys have seen this probably in the other videos if you've seen my other ones. But we'll be getting this uh, out there, and we'll show you some more detail up close. I'm probably, gonna, again, going to do like a build guide or assembly guide on this show you how easy this thing is to put together. But you can see how nicely it closed. I pre-opened it to open it up just so I can show you guys. But you can see how they, with the servo, they close up fantastic. I mean, it's just unreal how nicely uh, these things close. Now, I'm loving that engine detail, guys. It's gonna be slick to see this in the future photos. But anyway, guys, that's just a quick look at one of these really nice uh, prefabricated engine nacelles. Here's a look, guys, at one of the uh, main wing panels. And man, you can see all of the detailing on this airplane, all that rivet line detail. They definitely improved the finish uh, over my test plane because um, they definitely got a much better uh, foam filling. The, the foam material filled the mold a lot better on this one. Really, really nice. A um, couple things uh, to note, too. Uh, Brandon Moon was here also, guys. Uh, this little scoop or exhaust exit here was not on the original plane, not on my test model, but he suggested it to the factory, and they went ahead and put that in there. So a little bit more scale, scale detailing there. Uh, once again, thanks to Brandon for uh, doing all the good scale detail work and troubleshooting quality control he does on these things. Uh, engine detail, guys, or engine mounts on this, really nice. You can see you've got your three mounts here. There's also a, 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 a line right in here, guys, that connects up uh, your ESC and uh, your motors, uh, again, all hook on there. But the nice thing about the way this installs is it has a tongue and groove in here, so it's not just a screw on. The tongue and groove sli uh, uh, slips into the front of that motor. It, it, sli it slips onto here, and then it goes back onto here. And then you have two screws here and two screw here, screws here. Obviously, they're countersunk machine screws. But it's nice having that little lip to help hold that engine on. Speed controllers are right through here, guys, and they are functional, uh, uh, functional scoops right here, guys. This one is a non-functional. This one is a functional because the ESC is right in here, and it exhausts right out of here. Now, I just pulled that up. They probably just didn't put enough glue on there. Just put a little foam tack or a little contact cement tack that back down on there. Sometimes you have that with some of these airplanes. Not a big deal, but there's nice exhaust holes. You can see your 60-amp speed controller running through here where you go ahead and you connect on here, guys, your, uh, your main power line, which we saw that harness inside the fuselage here, and your ESC line. And the rest of the connections, like we said, they're all made right through here. Uh, and those are just, uh, uh, just simple bullet connectors. I think they're about two millimeters, I think. And then you can see here your plugins here and here. These are just uh, sort of mounting pads, alignment pads that, that hook up, uh, link right up to the, uh, the fuselage there. So main spar holes right here. Uh, all reinforced, guys. This is a very big or very rigid wing, I should say. Lots of spar running through here. You can try and bend it. You really can't. Uh, lots of structure running through this wing everywhere. And uh, just a really nice, uh, really nice quality overall. Now, another improvement I'm seeing here, guys, from my original airplane. Let me flip it around this way, actually. The guns on mine just kind of snapped in place and you glued them. But look what they did here. They went the extra step they went ahead and put some uh, threaded rods in there. So check that out. So you got threaded rod length to put your guns on. So you can just screw those in place and unscrew them when you're transporting it. Because I got to tell you, I lift my airplane up here all the time and the, those guns can get in the way. You can snap them off. Well, not anymore. Now they're kind of screwed 
into position. But really sweet, guys, as we get down to the, the wing tip here. Let me go along here. Look at that rivet detail. Very, very nice, guys, all the way around. Uh, wing mounted, very bright light. There's a red and a green on the wing tips, and that's about it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a hollow wing, or at least two halves of the wing, because this is a separate section. And then, of course, as I indicated before with the rudder, guys, all submerged style hinges. Look down that hinge line all the way down there, and even the flaps. You can see all these rotate around a center point, just like a traditional aileron flap or elevator would. So you got an aileron here and two flaps, separate servos on everything. Once again, guys, Rods, horns, linkages, all pre-installed with screws, screw hatches uh, on your uh, on these compartments here. You can pop open. There's a screw in there, screws here. So if you need to get into your servos to serv service them or change them out, uh, you can do that. Really nice flap here, guys. Submerged style. Once again, let me see if I can move it a little bit. Sometimes it's not good for the servo to do that, but for demonstration purposes. Uh, I like to show it to everybody. You can see how nice that hinge point is, guys. Rotates right around that center point. Just fantastic, guys, all the way around. Real impressed with this uh, final version of the wing here, guys, with improvements and everything. Just some, uh, just some top-notch stuff here, guys. I thought I'd show you guys what the wing uh, spar looks like. This thing is massive all by itself, 17 and a half uh, millimeters. Um, it's probably one of the thicker spars I've seen. All carbon, carbon fiber, super rigid. There's only one. It fits right through that uh, center hole. I have been yanking and banking and flying the airplane inverted and everything else and uh, haven't had any problems with it at all, guys. So super tough. Once again, guys, 17 and a half millimeter carbon spar on this airplane. Here's a quick look, guys, at the elevator panel. Uh, really nice detail, as you can see there. Um, all the way around, really slick. You can see I have the spars mounted in here. Initially with the test plane, we had some issues with the spars going in and out being tight, but they fixed that. And they actually went from fiberglass um, to uh, carbon spars in the tail. So got nice carbon fiber tails all the way around, or spars all around. They slip right in. You take this uh, section right here with these two spars, you insert them into those holes, and then you put the other side right on, and you got four screws. One, two, three, four on the other. One, two on here, two on the other side. And um, that's it, four screws put this in position. You do have to make your connections here, obviously, so it says elevator there. You just plug those into those plugins we saw there uh, prior to installing everything. Once again, guys, uh, some beautiful submerged style hinges. Once again, just like a full scale aircraft is. Very, very sweet, guys, all the way around. They also went ahead and changed, just like I recommended. They went ahead on the factory, put this on the second hole, because out on the end, it's a little bit too sensitive. I may even go in one more hole on mine if I do, I'll report back, but at least they got it in a really nice place that's very flyable. At 70%, it flies really great there. Even at 100%, it's fine, but for high-speed flight, uh, the 70% seems to work well. See the spars going all the way through, spar going through here, shorter spar up front, but overall, really nice uh, elevator panels, guys. Here's a quick look at the uh, prop and spinner bags. You can see here, really nice engineered... Uh, uh, propellers, I believe these are the props and hubs off the original FMS 1400 millimeter F7F Tiger Cat, or F7F Hellcat, I should say. The, a perfect fit for the Tiger Cat, uh, as they could, I think, use the same part on it. But you can see really nice uh, aluminum, or actually chromed hub. You can see there um, uh, flat head screws, or not flat head, but round, uh, non bevel head screws to go into those hubs. And uh, this is one change they made to the, to the spinner hub, which was a little different than my early plane, and instead of actually chroming it, they went ahead and made it a, a flat finish, uh, aluminum finish, which is really nice. I noticed uh, actually a lot of scale props, this, this whole thing actually is sort of like a brushed, uh, sort of a aluminum rather than a shiny chrome. So anyway, guys, are really nice props and hubs that you literally just bolt these together with uh, three bolts. Here's the last few parts to show you guys. They give you a Y harness that is labeled uh, throttle. So this is actually, uh, the part that actually, this part plugs into the receiver in the airplane and these plug to the ESC lines right there that come out of the wings and go in. So they just left this separate because again, this connects to the airplane, to the fusel or to the, uh, the receiver. And then uh, of course this end goes to those wing controllers, uh, wing uh, connectors. So you put those in. Last parts bag here to show you guys, this is all the screws that assemble the airplane. And I think they've given us a bunch of extras. They're basically for the wings, the engines, and the tail. And then this airplane's assembled and that's it guys. You can see uh, bevel head screws all the way around here. There's some there. They usually give you a couple screw uh, spares. And they also are machine screws, which is really nice. 
And then the only, the only two parts of the airplane that actually get glued on, if you want to put them on at all. Here's the two guns, actually. Those don't, I thought, the, the, again, the, the, the early plane I got, these glued on, but now you screw them in place. As you can see, again, I screwed the other ones onto the wing. So, uh, really nice. But the only two parts now that you glue together, instead of uh, six parts, is the antenna and the, uh, the pitot tube. Pitot tube comes off the uh, right wing, left wing. I think it comes off uh, this one right here. And there's actually a little hole that you can just use a little contact cement right here on this tip and just put it in place. Mine has actually stayed on there really well. Uh, also the, uh, the overhead uh, antenna, which actually plugs into the back of the, uh, uh, of the canopy. It's either here or it's either here. I forgot where that exactly goes. But you don't have to glue these details on if you want. A lot of times I tear antennas off of planes all the time, so you don't really need to glue it on. Just use a little contact cement and put those on. But that's it, guys. These are the only two parts that uh, glue on. The rest of this airplane just simply screws together. In fact, each engine is four screws, so that's eight. Each wing is four screws, so that's 12. Uh, and then you have uh, your tail screws, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this entire plane will assemble with 16 screws, and that's it. You do have to assemble your propellers with three screws each and mount those on with the prop nut, with the screw-on prop nut. But that's it, guys. This airplane's assembled with very minimal time. Last but not least is the instruction manual. Guys, they finally sent me one. I get them every once in a while, but actually this one um, didn't actually come with the plane. Uh, I got it via email and I just printed it out just to kind of show it to you guys. Uh, really pretty basic stuff, guys. I'm going to show this to you so you can kind of get an idea. Again, the features are right here. Um, and then here's the parts. This is just everything I just showed you. And you can see how you got all your spars there, engine nacelles, tail, fuselage, wings, nose cone, and then your props, spinner hubs, uh, your drop tank, your details, and your screws. So it's all right there, guys. You can see how easy of an assembly this is. I'm going to do a build guide of this. Um, it's more of an assembly guide. Uh, I haven't done too many of those in a while because these new airplanes, they screw together and you really don't need it. But I'm going to do one just to kind of show you guys how actually easy this airplane is to assemble. I'll do that next. So be watching for that video, guys. But you can see here, engines go on. You make your, uh, your uh, basically your uh, gear, which is your uh, channel 5B and your channel uh, 5C. That's your gear and your doors. Then you make your three engine connections. And you mount your nacelle with that tongue and groove and four screws. So that's your wing is done. Then you slide both your wings. You do that to both wings. You slide both wings on, okay, with your, uh, with your main spar right there. Uh, and then you put your four screws on. Wing is on. And then you make your connections. Here's what that Y harness is for to assemble uh, your two ESC lines. But uh, the two lines that come in from each wing is your power line to the harness to the Y harness and your ESC connection. And that's what this Y harness represents is that ESC uh, connection for both wings, Y harness together. Then your props and hubs, screwed together with three screws and nuts. And you put a single uh, prop nut, that hub, hub nut, and put it on. You glue this on. I recommend contact cement. I think they talk about using foam, say CA, which you can use. Uh, I would just use a little bit of contact cement, just tack it in place. And um, then if you have to take it off, you can get it off easy enough. Then your tail goes on, which um, I am missing that instruction. I must have Xeroxed this wrong. No, seven, eight. Uh, now it does show it right there. There's your tails going on, your two spars running through. You make your connections. Uh, and then you put your four screws on. And then your tail is on. And that's it, guys. You can fly with or without the drop tank if you want. But that's it for assembling this airplane, guys. Just a couple of screws. Again, they show right there your pitot tube being glued on. Um, they show your guns being, uh, well, I think they show them glued on, but again, they screw on now because that was an improvement they made part of the way through. And your antenna, if you want to put it on or not. Uh, and that's it. Your battery and you connect it and you hook up your receiver and you go fly, guys. Uh, schematic here of showing all of your uh, wing connections and the uh, main board that is in there on the airplane. And then they show basic controls. Uh, they talk about rates and so forth. I usually just kind of eyeball mine, so, but they give you high and low rates uh, recommended. Uh, I will say one thing on that. I use full aileron deflection because this plane is big and it really needs all that deflection and it rolls nicely that way. If you don't use enough deflection, you'll find it rolls kind of sluggish-like, so you want full deflection. And just make sure your motors are uh, turning the right way. If they're not, just remove one of the electrical leads and uh, which uh, there's three leads, just remove one and, and uh, two of them and then swap them. The motor will then spin the correct direction. So anyway, this talks about uh, all of your, uh, your linkages and where to put them. 
Uh, I don't know if I'm really excited about where do they have that. I'm not really sure what that's showing. I have to look at that in more detail. There you go. That's the one we're looking at. Uh, that one shows the position of the arms and the horn, so and where you want everything to be. So uh, as we get along to here, I made a couple notes on the CG section. They show 70 to 80 millimeters for your mark for your center gravity position. But my test plane flew at 57 and 63. So with the gear down, 57, retracted with the gear 63. That gave me a super stable. Um, a very, very stable, stable uh, seed center gravity. Um, uh, and if you notice, with the gear up and down, there's only a six millimeter swing. You wouldn't think that because all three of these landing gears, all three move backwards. And you would think that would shift the CG way back. But you, you, you got to remember that the main gear is actually um, 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 kind of right on the CG. So when it moves, it doesn't really swing it much. And uh, the nose gear is huge, I would think that was swinging. But again, it's only a six millimeter difference between the gear up and down roughly, and that's what I found when I did, uh, when I did my mine. There is a CG change, like I said, but not too much. Then as you get through here, like you always have in these things, there's an ESC programming guide for all of these things, and they put that in here. I'm just gonna glance at that real quick. So if you ever need to reprogram your, your ESCs or put it in high or low timing or set it back to default or for some reason there's a rogue program in there, you can reset it or re, kind of reprogram it there. And then what you normally don't get with too many of these planes from FMS is a uh, kind of a color chart here, guys. So they, they go through all the different, uh, this is the king of the cats. They show you where all the decals go in color, which is really nice. So you can see where all those decals go into position. You can also reference pictures online and kind of see where all this stuff goes as well on the full-scale airplane. But there's Big Boss Man. Again, you can find these all online. You can see where all those, uh, those decals go. But they give you all the color schemes. Actually, I think my printer missed one. Uh, let's see. Is it on the other side here? Yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Let's see. Oh, there it is right there. Sorry about that. I flipped. I missed a page. That's what I get for photocopying this thing. But there's the main picture, guys, that shows you uh, the, uh, the water transfer decals um, for the uh, nose arts and the two big sticker packages for all the airplanes. And then again, uh, let's go right here. This one is the, uh, uh, which one is this one? This is the Here Kitty Kitty uh, scheme. Again, shows you all the positions of where all these, uh, these things go. And the last one here is Bad Kitty. And that's what I'm gonna be setting mine up as. You can see right there, the, uh, the nose art there. This is one Bad Kitty, guys. This is the the, uh, the all-new, again, FMS 1700mm F7F Tiger Cat, guys. Not only is this airplane the uh, flagship of FMS models and the king of the cats, baby, this is probably the nicest, the single nicest foam warbird on the market, period, end of story. So uh, be checking for this, guys. I'm going to put out, be looking pretty soon, I'm going to put out a, a build uh, guide or really an assembly guide because this thing assembles pretty quick. quick. And mostly I'm going to do it just to show you guys like how easy this thing is to put together. And most FMS planes are this way. I know there's a lot of other manufacturers. You have a lot of gluing, you got a lot of assembly, you got to glue this glue, which is not hard to do. It's pretty easy. Putting on horns and linkages isn't a big deal. But these FMS planes, especially a big warbird like this, um, you do not need much time to get this together because it's all already on there. You just bolt a couple things together. You put your receiver battery in, you do some trimming and tuning, and this thing is ready to go. So be looking for the future videos, guys. I'll have an assembly, video, uh, an assembly video coming out on this really shortly, so be checking for that. We'll be doing some more flight demos of these as also. Uh, feel free, guys, to contact me if you have any questions about this, uh, or contact Brandon Moon. We, guys, we, we did the initial sort of product testing on the first two planes of these, so uh, we've been flying them and running them inside out and backwards. So anyway, guys, be checking for this. <coughs> Bless me. Sorry, guys. Coming to Horizon Hobby really soon, guys. Uh, once again, uh, they are running a raffle on this. So depending on when I get this video out, if I'm running late, maybe the raffle's over with. But if not, go to Horizon Hobby, okay, guys, and check out the raffle on this. They're giving one of these away uh, for free. You just got to register. So check it out, guys. There's only a few more days to do it. Uh, but be looking for this coming from Horizon Hobbies. Guys, this is an awesome airplane. Probably the best on the market. Be sure to check it out. Thanks, guys, for watching RC Informer. And as always, we'll see you next time.